Hello, and we're glad to know you're still there and watching the run of the first uh, edition of this year, 2023. I'll still get used to calling 2023. Uh, <laughs> it's like I'm stuck in 2022. But in 2023, we're going to take a look at some of the things that shaped the political landscape of uh, that year and uh, ultimately is going to end in this year because this is the year of election. February and March will be the times for election of our representatives, people who will now take the helm of affairs and pilot uh, this ship called Nigeria or this, this, this plane called Nigeria to expected end, we hope. So we'll be discussing some of these things and uh, with us to discuss this is Dr. Omoshola Deji. He will be he is joining us now to talk on some of these uh, issues. Hello, Dr. Deji. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes. Um, in 2022, a lot of activities um, really happened. We had the Electoral Act. We had the Milokong. We had so many other things. Let's begin with the Electoral Act and how you think it shaped the political landscape or it is going to shape the political landscape from now onto that uh, train, the election proper in February and March? Well, the Electoral Act is going to shape the political landscape remarkably, especially with the introduction of the BVAS uh, um, system by the electoral umpire. The 2023, it's going to be different. The 2023 election is going to be different. Mostly, um, most likely it will be more credible reliable because of the introduction of technology we all know that technology makes things easier um technology increased the credibility of election and we hope that INEC will be able to follow it through and the president himself has shown commitment by signing the uh, bill into law for the um, introduction of the electronic system unlike before the 2019 election where, where the president was reluctant to sign apparently because he is participating in the election and he felt that the uh, introduction of such technology will be to his own disadvantage so the introduction of the BIVAS system as put forward by the newly signed electoral act is a remarkable progress for the um, nigerian populist in terms of electoral credibility. And I think the introduction of such technology has increased citizen system, um, citizen interest in the participation of the election. We will see that more people are, have turned out to register and now they are collecting their PVC. The youth are eager. And that's what we've always said, that when the process is credible, there will be less political apathy. So the Electoral Act is a step in the right direction and it is a remarkable significant progress for our electoral system come 2023 presidential and gubernatorial and legislative elections yes uh, the beavers has had a, a demonstration sort of in the ekt and oshun elections uh, would you uh, how would you rate uh, the level of success of these beavers the, the level of success of the beavers to me has been very significant because it has helped electoral malpractice. We we have a um, situation in this country before now whereby a lot of abracadabra occurs while they are transporting the re results from the polling unit to the coalition center. And I think that is not right. In these days of technology, if I can be where I am, I'm speaking to you directly in the studio now, why can't we use that also for our um, electoral process? So I think that the the, um, the, the Biva system, especially because if you are able to transmit the result instantly and it's uploaded to the INEC portal has increased the um, electoral process, you will see that in a um, um, particular, I, I, um, I can't recall whether it's Oshu or AKT, whereby um, a, a particular polling officer was allegedly trying to manipulate the, the process by refusing to upload the results on the um, INEC 
portal alleging that the, the, there's no internet. The citizens themselves said, no, we have internet. We will give you. You must upload it. So the, 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 the um, introduction of the system has remarkably helped to reduce the magic that we used to have, the manipulation of figures that we used to have. And it, it, it helps for, for, for the citizens and even the political parties and the candidates to know the yes, result yes. real time. So the transparency that the Beaver system has introduced into the system, um, into our electoral process, is one thing that Nigerians must be glad about. Because when politicians know that if the, um, the, the, that the electoral system is transparent, and if you don't perform, if you don't meet up, if people don't want you, there is likelihood that you will lose the, the, the election. It will in turn increase, uh, increase performance in governance, unlike the system we've had before, whereby when politicians win elections, they believe that they are just there for their own interests and that of their family. So the Beaver system, to me, has really helped remarkably for the um, Oshu and Ekiti and also Anambra election. And I believe that going forward, it should be encouraged. And for the 2023 election, if we truly want credibility, then we should have the Beaver system. The, the argument about um, internet and in some areas of the country, I believe that, that the argument is baseless because the, the Beaver system should be done in such a way that even if it is with 3G or 2G network, you can still be able to upload the result on the system. And I like I said that just like our text messages, if you send a WhatsApp message and there's no network on your phone at that point in time, whenever there is network, the message automatically delivers. So the, the, the Beaver system has been made to operate in, um, um, in such ways that even if there's no network, it will later deliver. And I believe that that is what we need right now, especially in our political system, whereby politicians can go to any length to make sure that they put themselves on the Nigerian people. Um, we're, we're looking at you know political issues that shape 2022. And we cannot do that without, you know, mentioning the speech that was given by the present presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, when he came out and, you know, declared during a, pre uh, a campaign uh, event that it is his turn, his turn to become the president of Nigeria. And, you know, he went ahead to... When there was a bit of back and forth about his speech, he went ahead to remind the present president, Muhammad Buhari, about his past electoral defeats before 2015. He even, uh, the all as we used to say on Twitter, hit a lot of people, including uh, Governor Abiodun and Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo. And, you know, even the Yoruba words that he used during that speech, uh, Emilo Kong, kind of finally became, you know, a campaign uh, slogan. And, you know, people at the, at the time, the conversation surrounding that, that speech was that, you, you know, he was going to mar his presidential, you know, aspiration at the time. But as it is, he has gone ahead to become the candidates running for the APC. Do you think that the, the effect of that speech are still in the bags and would come forth just before the elections, or how do you see that? Well, it depends on how Nigerians take the speech of the APC presidential candidate at that point in time. Some Nigerians will see it as his right. So some will think that maybe he's speaking the truth anyway, that he, he actually helped these people that he has named. And um, it is of public knowledge that he was quite very influential as a political striker of APC at that time to um, ensure victory for his party. Now, having said that, some Nigerians who also think that the statement is an arrogant statement, mm -hmm. that you don't play God, you don't see yourself as the God of a um, democratic system, even if you have one form of influence or the other, and coming out in public 
to make such statement it, it, it is it is least expected of somebody of his caliber especially at an um election period election period is when politicians are most humble election period is when politicians are most respectful but sadly that has not been um, that has not been the attitude of the apc presidential candidate what we've seen like is arrogant is attributing victory on himself is the personalization of political power and i think that is not right this is the same person that we said that the mentioning of the presidential candidate of the uh, uh, of the um, of the labor party peter obi it is an insult to him this is the same person that we say the mentioning of the um pdp deputy governorship candidate in Lagos, the mere mentioning of her name, it is an insult to him. The question is, who are you? Are you God? You don't play God, most especially when you are going to meet people to vote for you. The mm -hmm. same people that you are playing God to, um, attributing the Alpha and Omega status to yourself. I, 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 and, they, and at the end of the day, you expect the people to vote for you. So I think Nigerians would decide based on how they take the statement but as for the presidency i think that in the mind of president um Mahmoud Buhari, i don't think the statement will go down well with him because and we can see the manifestation of that during the um, apc primary one would not really think that the president would support um based on the support that um Ashwadi gave to him for his emergence in 2019 and in 2015. But the president stayed away and let the process evolve. Luckily for him, Ashiwaju, he was able to to um, to emerge. But um, um, your boss will say that the child abused the Iroko tree and he looks back. He has forgotten that the Iroko tree is not going to act immediately. Um, um, if I can, if you permit me to say that in Yoba, he says, mm -hmm. The Iroko tree is not going to act immediately. So, if the president is going to act, I mean, he's the president, he has all the powers, he's the commander in chief of the armed forces, and he has nothing to lose. So, if, he, if the arrogance continues, he is sending a message to the political, especially the northern political oligarchs of how his presidency is going to be. And look at what happened yesterday when um, 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 former President Olusha Baba Sojo, who has right to support whoever he wants based on his own assessment of the candidate. But what did the, 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 the um, spokesperson of the uh, APC presidential candidate say? He, 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 he regarded President Obasanjo's just um, support for Peter Obi as worthless. You know, you can't uh, you can't be saying that. It doesn't cost you anything to say, okay, we thank you, we respect your opinion, but Nigerians will be the one to decide. So the arrogance in the camp of the APC presidential candidate himself is not helping matters at all. So let for me, I think the arrogance is one too many, it is getting too much, and it needs to tone down at, uh, at the way he speaks, the way he, he, he kind of like approaches things, and caution his aid, which is very, very important. Caution his aid to like take things easy. You have to be humble. Nigerians have to see you as being humble because if you are arrogant before you become a president, Nigerian president has so much powers. Now, if you now become president and you have the presidential powers to do and undo, at your beck and call, then what will you now be doing at that point in time? So, so far, he has been sending wrong signal of arrogance of the God of, um, of, of Nigerian politics, and I think that is not right for his presidential ambition. Okay, I, I know Bayo is standing by to ask you some other questions, but before we go to Bayo now, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just trying to... Uh, Pick your mind now. Before now, I know that Labour Party has produced like a governor, and we've heard their name somewhere, somewhere, as it is. 
Uh, but now, the prominence with which the Labour Party has, has, uh, has come into the political scene now for 2023 is because of the uh, cross carpeting, if you permit me to say that, of uh, one of the PDP hopefuls then, Peter Obi, into the fold of the Labour Party. And now, another, another thing emerged, another movement emerged that uh, they call the Obedient Movement. Even at that, we also have the Quanquasia up north and a few other people who are trying to make impact. But basically, there are like three major political parties now, or not, not even political parties, two, three major contenders for the mm -hmm. position of the presidency. Do you see this uh, third force, as people are calling it, uh, coming to really tip the balance of these uh, 2023 elections? And what, what gives you that hope? Well, a third force um, may, may not um, have the trophy at the end of the day. But one thing that has been clear is the flaws of the two prominent parties have given Peter Obi the stardom that he is enjoying now. And if you, if you look at it, in the mind of right-thinking Nigerians, I believe that majority of Nigerians think that it is wrong for a country with over 250 ethnic groups, the um, Fulani ethnic stock about eight years, then you now want to bring in another Fulani man at a time when there are secessionist threats in the country, at a time when even the man at the helm of our first president, Muhammad Dubai, who is the Fulani man, has performed woefully. So you now bring in another Fulani man. What is he going to kind of like campaign? If President Buhari has performed remarkably, maybe Nigerians would think that it is in the ethnic chain of the Fulani to, to kind of like perform remarkably when they are in power. But that has not been the case if we are to assess the Buhari administration. Hello, Deji. Oh, I, I think there's been an interruption. Yeah, well, uh, as soon as Deji is back, we're, we're going to uh, bring him back to continue what he was saying. In the meantime, um, I'm sure, Bayo, you're, you're just waiting to, to bombard him with <laughs> some, some more questions. <laughs> Even though uh, whatever question you ask him, it's not like he's in the, uh, at the helm of affairs, that mm. you, you will tell him what okay, did you do. Yes. Hello? Yes. Um, okay. I'm the jam back. Okay. As I was saying. Yes. Okay. Um, as I was saying, the, the, the flaw in the APC ticket as well has really helped Peter Obi. Maybe if both parties, the APC and PDP, had presented um, a candidate without any blemish or flaws, I think Peter Obi would not be enjoying the stardom that he is um, enjoying. Now, because if you look at the APC ticket, the Muslim Muslim ticket, it is absolutely a bad omen for the future of, um, of, um, of the Nigerian state. And the APC presidential candidate himself has not helped himself so remarkably because of the baggage that he carries. This is a candidate that Nigerians can't really say, what is your true name? What is your true 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 background what is the true source of your your um your wealth what is the status of your health these are things that have been hidden in somewhat mystery or the other and that is where i salute um president um former president because he has shown that he is not an ethnic man by assessing the candidate and i think president obasanjo in fairness to him is right if you as an elder state man could come out and say you want you want to support a candidate whereby so many things are shrouded in secrecy i think that would decrease the the, the, the respect that former president obasanjo has both in nigeria and outside the country itself so i think it is um, a good day for Peter Obi, but the likelihood of his emergence is still somewhat slim based on the issue of structure, based on 
the issue of its penetration to the north. And when I say the north, I say that with strong interest. I have not seen Peter Obi do much to, 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 to win the heart of the northern oil polloi, the Talakawas of the north, who we all know have a strong voting power. So I think that Peter Obi, despite his bright stances, if he really wants to clinch the, 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 the presidency of Nigeria, he has to go north. His approach has been much of south. He has to go north. Like the right now, he has to begin to, to, to penetrate the northern population and vote. And I think if he is able to achieve that, then his chances will become brighter. Okay, um, let's go to Bio now. Bio is standing by. Bio, hey, over to you now. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Moshola, for your incisive um, analysis. Uh, I will start with the last point. We, you said if Peter Obi wishes to be president of Nigeria, he has to go north. Um, there are those who believe that the key to Peter Obi winning uh, and you have, of course, juxtaposed that relative to that of Ashiwaju and the former Vice President Abubakar Tiku. Uh, but some people believe that he, Peter Obi will need to get the Middle Belt and get the Northeast. Um, do, you, do you believe, first of all, that that is a right uh, strategy? Uh, and secondly, do you think that uh, the, the Labour Party has the resources to marshal uh, such uh, an endeavor you know, on the side of Peter Obi? Well, if I can um, answer your question, um, your point is very logical, and that's why you see that in my submission, I didn't give um, Peter Obi a pass mark. But I didn't say, oh, yes, he's going to get the trophy. As a political scientist, I'm saying that Peter Obi has um, a lot of work to do in terms of the structure. And I've said it on other platforms before that there are some people that will even be that even wish to vote for Peter Obi, and it will be difficult for them to locate the logo of the Labour Party in terms of making the Labour Party an household name. Everybody knows the logo of PDP and APC. I don't think that is occurring on the part of the Labour Party. Then we not. It's very important, and I can break it down into two. Now, um, Peter Obi's uh, emergence largely relies on the north. Then, by the north, I mean the north central, the northeast, and the, the um, northwest. In the sense that, if you go back to the um, Ezeogu coup of the 1960s, that has brought some kind of ethnic suspicion between the southeast and the northern oligarchs. Has that suspicion been erased by the emergence of Peter Obi? How do they see a Peter Obi presidency? Do they see Peter Obi as someone that can carry them along or won't come back for vendetta based on the alleged injustice that has been meted out by northern politicians and military men who have had the opportunity to occupy power over the decade. That question to me, I think, has been left largely um, unanswered. But if we are to trace it back by, um, by how many support Peter Obi has gotten from the northern oligarchs, we would say that it is um, few. And that, to me, means that that ethnic suspicion that was erased when the northern oligarchs supported former President Onusha Gwamba Sonjo to clinch the presidential seat of Nigeria in 1999, we do not have that now for Peter Obi. And these northern oligarchs, whether we like it or not, command good Followership. I served in Kano during my um, NYC days years back. And one of the things I realized is that they not still have this system, this like command and control system, whereby 
um, one rich man that is seen as a demigod that everybody are shouting rank a day day for can say okay go this way and before you know it the talakawas the alimajiris they just go that way the north still have a system whereby when their respected religious cleric speaks and say oh go this way you find them going that way so the northern oligarchs how peter obi has been able to mingle with them to gain their trust will largely impact on whether he wins the presidential seat or not. That said, his penetration to the the, 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 the Talakawas themselves, just like it will be difficult when Buhari was contesting in 2015 for a northern oligarch to tell the Talakawas that don't vote Buhari, because Buhari has made himself like the masses champion at that point in time. So if Peter Obi is not going to mingle with the Northern oligarch, which I think he, he, he needs to, then he has to make him, he has to sell himself to the Northern grassroots so that he can present himself as the candidate that they need. But right now, those two issues I think are uh, a major thing that Peter Obi needs to work on. One is penetration of the northern oligarchs. Two, the acceptability by the northern masses. Okay, um, just a quick follow-up, if Yamkul allows me. Um, you mentioned the, the, the uh, in response to Yamkul's earlier question about the potential impact of the beavers in the next elections. Uh, and yes, and I believe your, your analysis was spot on. But something which is allied to that could also be the number of registered voters in each of the geopolitical zones of the country. And I saw a data, if that data is correct, um, it was a data about the number of people who have not yet collected their PDCs. Now, in the north, that number is in the few thousands. In the southwest, it is over three million who have not collected their PVCs. In the southeast, it is over a million people who have not collected their PVCs. How do you see this, if, if these figures are correct, how do you see this impacting the next elections? Well, I see it impacting the election for the candidates from the um, regions you mentioned, if by any chance the election um, goes the ethnic way. Because, um, and one of the problems with the 2023 election is that we have major candidates from the three major ethnic groups of Nigeria. We have the um, PDP Satiko Akubaka from the Usa Fulani. Peter will be from the um, Igbo extraction and um, Ashwa Dutinumbu from the um, Yoruba Southwest extraction. So if the um, ethnic um, um, ethnic passion that we've always had in our election to go then, um, Ashwa Dutinumbu will be losing a huge chunk of vote. And um, Peter will be, will be losing like um, huge um, vote as well. So I think that the the the, the um, um collection of the pvc should be based on public enlightenment when people begin to see the essence of voting when people be begin to see that um um voting during an election is more like an oxygen in nose ring, then they will take it serious they would they, they would go out to participate in the electoral process but as it is now with the failures that we, we have in governance with the way politicians go into political or um, office and just go there to represent themselves and their family this is affecting um political participation but if the trend continues the way it is it will definitely affect most likely Peter will be and um, the, 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 
the candidate of the APC, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, be because now, for in terms of the major ethnic group, is a more of to your tent, O Israel. And that is why that um, analysts have been saying that the election might go into a runoff. Because if you look at um, the past election, for you to become president of Nigeria, you need the support at least two out of the three major ethnic groups. If you look at past elections carefully, if, um, if you are contesting, you must have maybe the support of the Yoruba and the um, um, Awusa Fulani or the, um, okay, for, for example, the emergence of President Muhammad Bari, and if you look at the formation of his cabinet and team, it's majorly the vote of the um, Awusa Fulani and the Yoruba. So, um, during during um, 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 former President Obasanjo's Obasanjo. time, we have both from the um, uh, Awusa Fulani and the um, Igbo, um, less of vote from the Southwest, um, not so much as expected from the Southwest. But the Nigerian political history, you need the support of two over three to become president. Now, the problem is, where will that support comes from? Because Atiku Abubakar is on the ballot, Peter Obi is, um, is on the ballot, and Ashwaju Tinumbu is on the ballot. And these are three strong candidates, whether um, uh, um, anybody likes it or not. So I think the solution is people that want the trophy has to go all out to educate voters to make sure to, to 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 make them see the reason why they must collect their PVC. Most Nigerians sincerely are bothered about survivor. The economy is so hard, it, like people are just struggling to survive. So, and if we are to put the Maslow hierarchy of needs into the picture now, people will first of fall think of how to survive first. People will first of all think of how to live their life, especially when they are sure that government would not address any of their plight. In systems whereby the government is responsive, you see increased political participation. It comes naturally. So I think people that want to, 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 to govern Nigeria, both at the local government, state, and the federal level, has to now go all out to educate people, to, 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 to ensure that they collect their PVC. And I think the APC and the Labour Party has a lot to do in this regard. Okay, uh, Dr. Deji, it's been wonderful having you. There's so many other things that we could have talked about uh, uh, in the course of this program. But um, because we are out of time, we'd like to just uh, say thank you to you for being a part of our show this morning. Thank you for having me. Always my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Well, that was uh, Dr. Omoshola uh, Deji, uh, a political analyst. Uh, he's a political scientist, rather. And he spoke to us on some of the issues that shaped the political landscape of 2022. And ultimately, we're getting to the election proper in February and in March. We're hoping that you are making effort to collect your PVC. Right now, until December, um, January 15, it's still very close to you at your uh, polling unit. So wherever you are, try to get to your polling unit before it gets back to the local government headquarters where you have to go and queue uh, after maybe a thousand people have reached there like five o'clock. So <laughs> forget about uh, the fire brigade approach and make sure you go collect your PVC at this time. We'll just take a short break for, to enable us to bring you the news. And after that, we'll be discussing uh, between us, uh, Uche, um, Bayo, and I, on the letter that was written to the youths by the former president, Olusegun Basanjo. Just stay with us. <laughs>